As the British seaside holiday enjoys a revival, we can look back to and take inspiration from a previous golden age in the 1920s to the 1950s, and in particular to the work of Pontefract-born Charles Piers, a brilliant artist who loved the sea. He was a renowned travel poster designer, an official naval war artist, and the founding president of the Royal Society of Marine Artists. In this exhibition, we've brought together some of his finest travel poster artworks here in his hometown for the first time. The posters advertise the trendiest destinations of the day, and they're full of bright young things wearing the latest in swimwear and beach fashion, as well as families having fun, playing on the sand and splashing in the sea. The posters contributed to a boom in UK rail travel and British tourism, and they may just inspire a new renaissance on our coastlines today. It's intriguing that Charles Piers, a man from inland Pontefract, should have fallen in love with the sea in such a big way. But he wrote about it, he painted it, he sailed on it, and he helped to promote it to the British people. The posters helped to keep Britain's beaches bustling and promenades packed. And today, as we all become more carbon conscious and we head back to Britain's coastlines, we may just be going back to those golden days inspired by Charles Piers' example. So Charles Piers was one of the masters of poster design in Britain in the 1920s and 1930s. And one of the things he specialised in was the beach, the holiday resort and especially the really fashionable locations like Brighton and Yarmouth, Lytham St Anne's, but also here in Filey in North Yorkshire, which he presented as being a family holiday resort, the sort of place you could bring your kids and you can explore the local beach and the sort of landscape around. And if you look at the poster of Filey in the 1920s, it has a lady sitting over there on one of those promontories with this headland curving invitingly behind. And these sort of posters, they were displayed on windswept, dreary railway stations throughout the land where travellers and commuters would look at them and think, that's where I want to go on holiday, that's what I'm going to do this year. And that's what the railway companies wanted. And they paid for these posters jointly with the local town council as a means of joint marketing. And what a dreamlike and lovely marketing image it was. Piers was first and foremost a marine artist and he understood the sea, he was a keen yachtsman and you really see this in his posters, particularly the posters he did for London Transport in the 1920s and 30s for South End and other Thameside destinations. He understood the sea and he was in love with the sea and his feel for it really comes across in his commercial work. So we're used to seeing posters framed up in an art gallery or a museum looking lovely, but these posters were posters for a purpose. It was art that had come down from the pedestal. It was about selling a product or a service. And Piers' posters would have been seen at a place like this, a railway station. This is what they were designed for, and this is where commuters and the travelling public would have seen them and dreamt about their summer holidays. It's really exciting to have so many of these iconic travel posters here in Pontefract, especially as they were painted by one of our own sons. He grew up here and started his training here at school in East Hardwick and at Pomfret College, and he went on to become a renowned marine specialist, famed for his stunning river and seascapes and his sun-soaked travel posters. In his lifetime, he exhibited at the prestigious Royal Academy in London, and now his works are held in national collections, including some that have been lent to this exhibition. We're also lucky enough to have his self-portrait on display here in his hometown for the first time. It shows off his twin passions, depicting him as a sailor at sea and showing his amazing talent with oil paints.